Our sun can be used to provide energy for a wide variety of space thermal applications, such as electrical power generation, thermal propulsion, or high temperature furnaces. NASA is developing advanced concentrator technologies to concentrate and direct the sun's energy for these applications. One of these technologies is the refractive secondary concentrator. This concentrator collects light from a larger thin film inflatable primary concentrator and focuses that energy into a high temperature receiver. The refractive secondary concentrator can be used in any system that requires the conversion of solar energy into heat. Our simulated space environment tests have successfully demonstrated that we can reach temperatures in excess of 2150 degrees Fahrenheit. The tests also successfully show that we can capture about 87% of the light that enters the refractive secondary. If we add an anti-reflective coating, we predict we can actually improve this efficiency to about 93%. This is important because the more efficient the system is, the smaller the concentration system needs to be. This translates into a system that's significantly lower in mass and is more cost effective. Made out of sapphire fashioned into a cone with a faceted extractor tip, the refractive secondary concentrator accepts a converging beam from a matched primary concentrator. Sunlight is refracted at the front surface of the cone, then reflected internally at the cone's sides and inside the extractor rod, which is inserted into a receiver. The faceted surfaces along the extractor tip broadly distribute the escaping light into the receiver, providing efficient, uniform heating. Many related components are used with the thin film inflatable primary concentrator and refractive secondary concentrator system, such as a pointing and fine focus control system, thin film rigidized support structures, and a high temperature receiver. Together, these technologies have the potential to provide a lightweight, high efficiency system that converts solar energy into heat. Our plan is to bring all these technologies together and test them in a space simulation facility. This way we can see how these different components will work as an integrated unit in space. Testing in a space simulation facility like NASA Glenn's Tank 6 is really the next best thing to performing an actual spaceflight experiment. Beyond space solar power, this technology has the ability to provide cost-effective solutions for the military and the communications industry. In addition to power generation, this concentrator technology can also be used for thermal propulsion. We can use it for orbital transfer or for retrieving stranded satellites and moving them back into the proper orbit, much like a tugboat. Also, once the vehicle arrives at its destination, we can then use the same system to provide power and communications. Therefore, this system offers tremendous potential for multiple applications. Many efforts have been made to integrate elements such as batteries and other energy harvesting devices with solar cells to enhance energy conversion efficiency and storage capacity. The power tile introduces several new technologies, including ultra-high efficiency solar cells, thin film thermoelectric devices, and inorganic solid-state lithium batteries. The conception of novel, extremely robust solid-state electrolytes has allowed for the creation of a new type of battery that is based on many thin film layers stacked on top of each other. These batteries exhibit excellent lifetime and environmental performance characteristics. Current testing show that they could survive and function for 10 or more years in a variety of space environments. Thin film thermoelectrics create electrical current anywhere a significant difference in temperature is found. The greater the temperature contrast, the more energy can be derived. While larger thermoelectric devices have been fabricated and studied for years, the ability to make thin film mini junction devices is just developing. A fully microfabricated thermoelectric device is shown on the left, and an image of thermoelectric elements made using nanowire template technology is on the right. Using these nanodimensional elements, new technologies allow for heat to electrical energy conversion to be performed by an extremely lightweight and compact device. The traditional solar array uses many layers to support and protect the solar cell. Only about 10% of the volume of a typical solar array structure is actually devoted to energy harvesting. The idea driving the power tile is to replace as much of the passive structural components with active elements that aid in energy harvesting, storage, and control. The power tile is assembled by starting with a highly efficient photovoltaic cell that uses either the rainbow technology under development by NASA JPL 
or the more traditional multi-junction construction. A thin film thermoelectric device is then heterogeneously integrated on the backside of the solar cell. This device may be either micro or nano fabricated. For energy storage in times of eclipse, or to provide extra power during high drain duty cycles, a multi-layer solid state battery is packaged onto the cold side of the thermoelectric device. Custom designed ultra compact integrated charge electronics are used for power management on each of the power tile modules. Finally, thermal management structures are used to help create the greatest temperature differential possible across the thermoelectric device. When sun is incident on the power tile, the solar cell heats up to approximately 90 degrees centigrade in low Earth orbit. The thermal venting keeps the cold side of the tile at a lower temperature, less than 50 degrees centigrade, thereby providing the thermoelectric device with a sufficient temperature gradient. The charge electronics constantly provide power to the main bus, regardless of whether it must draw from the battery or the active elements. During times of sunlight exposure, the power tile maintains the battery at a fully charged state. Preliminary testing on the power tile devices shows that the thermoelectric element will likely be able to harvest a significant amount of power, thereby increasing the overall device efficiency by at least 5%. Current estimates show that the use of a fully functional power tile system could as much as double the continuous power mass ratio as provided by current state-of-the-art solar cell array and battery systems. Solar arrays turn light energy from the sun into electricity. In SSP, this electrical power is beamed via microwaves down to the earth where it is converted back into electricity. SSP's very high transmission rates require the building and testing of new solar arrays which can operate above 300 volts and possibly 1000 volts. Solar arrays turn the energy and light from the sun into electricity. In space solar power, this electrical power is then beamed back to Earth and converted back into electricity again. In order to efficiently transmit the large amounts of power space solar power requires, very high transmission voltages are required. Tremendous weight savings result from generating this power at the voltage at which it will be transmitted. This is where high voltage space solar arrays will be essential. If high voltages can be achieved, these arrays can also be used to directly power electric propulsion engines, such as hull thrusters and ion engines. We test the solar arrays at high voltage in a space vacuum plasma chamber, which simulates the low pressure and ionized gas found in space. Analysis of orbital telemetry data from space satellites led to the discovery that power failures could occur at voltages as low as 80 volts. Tests have shown that this type of failure was due to arcing, or spark discharges, into the thin ionized gas of space. Arcing through plasma can burn up sections of a solar array and cause permanent short circuit. Yet SSP will require high efficiency performance at voltages perhaps 10 times as great. Solar arrays that do not arc at voltages up to 1000 volts have been and are being designed and tested in a simulated space environment. Work continues in order to establish new guidelines for engineers to build and manufacture high voltage solar arrays for space. Our civilization depends on technology. Understanding how to make our technology work properly in space can benefit us all. Learning how to manage the abundant solar power available in space is key, not only to surviving and thriving in space, but also to using the space environment to improve life back here on Earth. High voltage solar arrays will be useful also whenever electric propulsion is needed in space. Future missions to the planets or Earth satellites that can change their orbits will depend on this technology.